Hello, my name is Bob Bonzar with the Yaskawa Technical Training Department. This is a series of electronic learning modules, or ELMs, for the Drive Wizard software. This section we will address backing up and restoring parameters, programming with or without power applied to the drive, which will be helpful if we just need to load a drive with a file before shipping. Application Wizard, which makes programming a drive simple and little effort during setup. Auto Tuning, to provide optimum motor performance. And Conversion, handy if it may be necessary to retrofit a drive from an earlier model. So to begin, let's connect to a drive. In an earlier ELM, we covered this process. While connecting, the drive wizard will automatically read the parameters from the drive. We mentioned that we can change an option setting so that it won't override the file. Connecting to a drive can be done with or without power. In this example, the drive is not powered, but we can still connect by using the power from the PC. This will power up the control board just enough to program it, but not enough to run the drive. You can immediately view and edit the parameters that were just downloaded during the connection by clicking on the view and edit. Or if you wanted to read them again, you could. It's just redundant. Now we can see the parameter list. If you go to the modified parameters from the tree on the left, you can see what has been changed from the default values. They will appear in red. To edit a parameter, click on that parameter and you can change it immediately. For this example, we'll select C1-01 for the acceleration time. You can choose to save the update as a working value if you're not connected, or save it directly to the drive if you are. Now you can see that the color has changed to red to indicate a modified value. You can also change the parameter back to default, simply clicking on the default button, and then saving it. Now you can see the working value goes back to the default color as well. Now that you've downloaded the parameters, you can export the list in different medias, PDF, Excel, and so forth. Here I can save the Excel for future use or send it out. I can scroll through it. The M represents the modified value. If you do decide to send it from Drive Wizard, you need an Outlook account. Otherwise, since you've already saved the file to your computer, you can send it out through any other emails you may use. If Gmail is used as a web client and you decide to go through Drive Wizard, but it doesn't work, the MAPI is mentioned in the help file shown here. At the bottom of the screen, you can search for a parameter directly instead of having to scroll through the full list. At the top, select Edit to see the different features, like Compare. This allows you to compare the current parameter list in Drive Wizard to what's in the drive. While editing, you can work offline as well. But if you want to compare a working value to what's in the drive, you must reconnect. We can see the values both highlighted in red and yellow. Red means a modified value from default. Yellow means the value is in the drive currently. Also across the top, 
you can set the drive parameters to default or initialize. If we select default, the values go back to those from the factory. You can see there are no modifieds now. If you initialize, you can choose two wire, three wire, or whatever other options might be available. Two wire here is the same as if you restore back to default. We also call this factory default. Now, if I select three wire, it'll show me the parameters that will be affected by this choice. And now you can see it initialized for three wire, which also meant it had to make some adjustments to the digital inputs. And we can see those here in the modified list. The next item is the application wizard. Using the application wizard can make things easy for you. You don't need to be connected to the drive. A file can be created with or without being connected. Click on the application wizard. The application here is a drive basic setup. Click start. OK to continue. We'll go with two wire and save the working value. Initialization here starts the project with a clean slate. If we were connected to the drive, it would initialize it too. Now simply just follow the steps. Select the reference source. Is it coming from the keypad, terminals, a network, or a pulsed input? Then the run source. Is it coming from the keypad, terminals, or network? Are you using an external fault input? If so, it can be set up for normally open or a normally closed contact. Select the load. Are you using dynamic braking? What's your motor type? Select the control method. What's your stopping method? Are we running in reverse? And then your Excel and decel times. Those values you can adjust right here. Upon completion, you can download the file to the drive or save it for another time if you're working offline. You can see the parameters that got changed by going to the modified parameters. You can also save the file to your computer. Next, we will auto tune. There are different types of auto tuning, but primarily, rotational, or stationary. This also can be done at the end of the application wizard. This, of course, requires the drive to be powered up and the motor to be connected to the drive. Auto-tuning is necessary. By performing an auto-tune, you can improve speed search, optimize the torque per amp of the drive and motor, and energy saving. When is the best time to auto-tune? You'll want to usually do this after the motor's been warmed up. Maybe let it run for an hour. 
And when you're doing auto-tuning, you want to do it multiple times till you find the values start to become consistent. And we'll start with the standard or rotational auto-tuning. This requires that the motor be free from the load, no belts or coupling connected to the shaft. This is actually the best way. However, if it's not possible to uncouple the motor shaft, or it may take a significant amount of time to uncouple it, then use non-rotational or stationary instead. We'll demo both types here. Selecting the rotational, we do have to be careful. There is a warning before continuing that the motor shaft will be rotating. Now from the motor nameplate, we can populate the necessary data. There is a lot of information, but items not given off the nameplate are okay to leave. The drive will calculate those values or they'll remain at default. Now we're ready. Again, make sure there's nothing connected to the motor shaft or in the way that can get caught. In this case, we have the little wheel with the Yaskawa name on it, so it doesn't weigh much. And press run. In the beginning, you'll notice that the motor doesn't actually rotate. It does the stationary portion of the auto tuning, but the drive is sending in a current and voltage. The motor will start to calculate the values through the different frequencies. and it's done. When it is complete, we can see those parameter values updated and we can transfer them to the project. And we can see them in the modified parameters as well. Next, the stationary auto-tune. It still gives us a warning, but it won't actually rotate. You will notice that there's a lot less data required here. It still sends out a curtain voltage and does the Ohm's Law calculation. It just doesn't rotate, so the process is shorter, but still effective. And we're done. Another helpful feature is Convert Project. Conversion allows you to upload a file from an earlier model drive, then convert that file to a newer model, and download it to that newer drive. For this example, we will begin connecting to an A1000. The A1000 must be powered up to connect. Here we can see the parameters from that drive. Then we'll go to Tools and Convert. A few things to note that the drive's firmware version of the GA800, in this case, is 9017. Now this is a reason that you want to update the drive wizard software to the latest. The newer drive you'll be installing will always have the latest firmware coming from the factory. Also you can select whether you want to include the KVA parameters 
which depend on the size of the unit. Also, you may want to just do the modifieds. Select go. You can see the conversion log of the parameters that were changed between the drives. Go ahead and save this. Now transfer the converted data to the active project. As you can see now, it is a GA800 file. Again, note the modifieds. And save it to your PC. Now we will connect to the GA800 file. But again, as soon as we do, Drive Wizard tries to read the parameters from the connected drive. But that's okay. We'll call up the converted file that we saved earlier. Drive I'm connecting to doesn't have the same firmware that we converted the file. This is why you want to keep Drive Wizard software updated. In this case, it's okay. We'll continue for the purpose of the ELM. We can save and continue. And it will disconnect us. Now reconnect to see the parameter file updated in the drive. 